quite possibly the single most consequential action of the Trump administration short of nuclear war is their efforts to destroy net neutrality. This is an issue that many people have not even heard of. It is not well known, partly because the mainstream media have a conflict of interest in reporting on it. It is consequential because if Trump's Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, succeeds in destroying net neutrality, it will be much harder for individuals and small businesses to reach an audience and economically infeasible for internet engineers and entrepreneurs to create new ways to use the internet. That's because internet access providers have in the past and will in the future block, throttle, including alter, including stripping encryption, and redirect content they do not like and increase their prices to deliver content at the standard high speeds that everyone now expects. Net neutrality is the principle that all traffic on the internet should be treated equally by internet access providers. Net neutrality means that anyone with an internet connection can compete in the marketplace of ideas based on the quality of their presentation. Net neutrality is important because progress on every substantive issue I can think of is blocked because every countermeasure threatens someone with substantive control over the media. Let's consider two examples. In 1999, an America West flight made an emergency landing when a Saudi national tried to break into the cockpit. The perpetrator was released after producing a ticket apparently paid for by the Saudi embassy. This and other questionable actions by Saudis with apparent connections to their government were classified top secret after the September 11th attacks and was only declassified in July 15th of 2016 after almost 15 years of activism by people concerned about information being hidden from the public. It is impossible to know for sure why the Bush administration classified this information, but senior Bush administration officials had previously called for, quote, rebuilding America's defenses, which they complained might take a long time without a new Pearl Harbor. Other documentation indicates that violent jihadists represent between three and fourteen hundredths of one percent of Islam and most of those are inspired by the Wahhabi Salafist strain of Islam promoted by Saudi Arabia. Over 99.8% of Muslims worldwide are no more violent than people in the U.S. and elsewhere who have so far supported the U.S.-led war on terror. So why is the United States still supporting the Saudis? For the other example, we will discuss incarcerations. After being relatively stable for the 50 years between 1925 and 1975, the incarceration rate in the U.S. shot up by a factor of five over the next 25 years. This change has been explained as a product of decisions by mainstream commercial broadcasters to focus on the police blotter while firing nearly all of their investigative journalists. A few popular programs like 60 Minutes were exceptions. Major broadcasters made out like bandits while their audiences were largely unaware of what they had lost from the near elimination of investigative journalism. These examples are consistent with two general principles. Number one, Every media organization in the world sells changes in audience behaviors to the people who pay their bills. Number two, how many organizations thrive while biting the hands that feed them? Net neutrality is a threat to major world leaders, major leaders the world over, which explains the Great Firewall of China and why Turkey is now blocking Wikipedia. Net neutrality makes it easier for the bottom 99.5% of humanity uh, to obtain better information on options available to them and to organize to better defend and promote their interests. One theory based on following the money would seem to explain the difficulties in achieving progress in these and other intractable problems. 
the most important information people need to to know to protect their interests is rarely fit to print in the New York Times because it would offend major advertisers. And it is similarly not fit to print or disseminate in other commercial media. Everyone, including major internet access providers in the Trump administration, officially agree with net neutrality. However, Trump and his supporters claim that the, 19, uh, that the 2015 Title II order that made net neutrality enforceable forced internet access to providers to reduce their investments in new infrastructure. And they did reduce such investments. The drop in 2015 capital expenditure sounds big at almost a billion dollars. However, it is less than three quarters of the annual changes since 1996. This drop is cited but not plied up in the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, or NPRM, on Restoring Internet Freedom, published May 18 by Trump's FCC. The damage they claim does not make sense if you actually look at the data. Trump's FCC wants to transfer enforcement to the U.S. Federal Trade Commission and the Antitrust Division of the Department of Justice. Those opposing this action uh, argue the following. Number one, history records that the Fed Title II order provides the only way that a typical American will be able to find an Internet access provider who will not block, throttle, alter, or redirect their requests for information from the Internet. FTC and antitrust cannot enforce it. Previous abuses by Internet access provider led to several things eight years of, active, of increasing activism on this issue, multiple less, lesser remedies by the FCC that were blocked by courts, 3.7 million comments on, on a proposed FCC action in 2014 that led to the 2015 Title II order, and almost 22 million comments on the, this Notice of Proposed Rulemaking filed by the August 30, 30th deadline. Number two, all relevant data that is reasonably available and credible indicate that the Title II order is working to benefit society as a whole without seriously damaging the Internet access providers. The New York Times said that Trump's FCC cherry-picked their data. Ernesto Falcon, Legislative Counsel with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, or EFF, said that none of the publicly traded Internet access providers mentioned the Title II order in their filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, which is the only place with credible penalties for misleading comments. In their FCC filings, they've said the business is fine. Number three, since the Title II order, consumers have benefited from being able to use applications and devices that had previously been blocked. Number four, if the FCC implements part of their proposed changes, quote, the result will have a disastrous effect on innovation in the in e Internet ecosystem, end quote, according to Internet engineers and pioneers. That's because new ways of using the Internet that require net neutrality could not profitably be developed. However, it seems likely that this issue will move from the FCC to Congress. Ernesto Falcon with the, FCC, with the Electronic Frontier Foundation said that people need to take the next step, which is meet your elected officials, your two senators and members of the House, well, uh, which is only at, because it is only through mobilization that we will win this. Many consumer advocacy groups are responding to this issue through a, uh, through a coalition called BattleForTheNet.com. But don't believe me. Check the facts. Documentation for every claim in this video is available in the Wickover City article on net neutrality and restoring internet freedom available via en4j.org slash zero. This is a fight for the future of civilization. Join us.